Hello, I am Jayashree Jethani and today I am going to talk to you about a very interesting topic in corporate communication, namely corporate identity and image factors. So the discussion would uh, encompass the following broadly, uh, definition, role and scope of corporate communication and defining corporate image, what all comprises corporate identity and how corporate identity is linked and can be aligned to corporate reputation. What is there in a name? A rose by any name would smell just the same. I'm sure you've heard about it. Is name very important? Yes, of course it is. Name is as important for companies as for human beings. That's the identity that we get from our birth. The name, the surname, the family, they become our defining factors. Companies also have certain identities and they really guard about it. They really work towards building a distinct identity because it has many uh, benefits. It has many unique propositions. So let's go discussing it. Corporate organization, as I said, like human beings have identities. All identities are not necessarily inborn. These can be cultivated and acquired with a desired response in view. An identity has both tangible and intangible features. Tangible are the name, the uh, identity uh, in terms of, uh, uh, could be advertising, could be in terms of what is manifest. And intangibles are those that are earned over a period of time. If I were to ask you to define yourself some of you would give your demographic profile about your name, your surname, your age, your gender, your education, so on and so forth. But some would also think that this is not enough. You might talk about your value system, what you believe in, what is that makes you what you are, you are what you think. All these two put together, the tangible and intangible makes for a complete human being. Similarly, for organizations also, both tangible and intangible uh, you know, issues are important to make it a complete whole. Now let's look at corporate image. Image is not necessarily what you create. Image is what people perceive you as, the way they de deconstruct you. You are what you think you are, but it's not necessarily that people who are watching you, judging you, deconstruct in the similar manner what you think you are. It's very difficult, but complex, but interesting in corporate uh, deconstruction. Recent research has explored, uh, exploded the myth uh, that corporate image is determined by an organization uh, by itself. Many scholars now believe that image is a product of multiple variable impression formations uh, which are located in the interaction among organizational philosophy, environment and personal factors. A corporate brand hence is not just the outward manifestation of an organization, rather is the core of values that defines it. The communication of these values is an important part of how a corporate projects itself and is perceived. Building a corporate identity is a long drawn process and the companies spend a fortune building a desired identity which carry them for long. What is corporate identity really? There are various opinions as to what comprises the corporate identity. Is it color, style? lettering, signature line, stationery, uniform, building, advertising, public relations, so on and so forth? Yes. Is it some, and it's also the sum total of goodwill earned, which comes from the experience the customer has with the service or the product a company offers or a institution offers over a period of time because image is made in the perception of the people. So what is manifest is through corporate identity, 
the equity is built through the experience a person has with the company or the institution which uh, is seeking a relationship with that person. So what really are the benefits of corporate identity? It motivates people. It creates a sense of belonging, of pride, and creates a sense of being with the company. One feels very proud of the company he works with. One aligns oneself with the company one works with. Similarly, when we use certain products, high-end products, we feel aligned because that is what defines us. I haven't seen much in India, but uh, overseas, some of the brands, big brands like Louis Vuitton and all, there are signature purses and other accessories. So people buy those. So they become the talking, walking publicity for that company. Why do they do that? They do it because they know it's a high-end product and they, are, they have a certain kind of a perception about themselves which they would like to share with the people so they carry the signature purses and other accessories. Corporate identity, a robust corporate identity also helps build a company's ethos, culture and heritage. I recall many years ago, uh, I read a very interesting uh, you know, input on Coca-Cola. When the company turned 100 years, so it decided to slightly change the formula and it informed the people, uh, the customers, that now onwards they'll have a new taste, new Coca-Cola. Imagine what happened after that. Thousands of petitions, road shows, and you know, applications were sent to Coca-Cola saying that they want their old Coke back. They are not interested to have anything new about the Coke. Now tell me, should the company be happy or sad about it? I'm sure you guessed it right. The company was extremely happy and elated because they said that the, the brand now does not belong to us. It belongs to the people. And now nobody can rob it of the equity it has earned in the minds and hearts of the people. That is the importance and that is the value of a very robust corporate identity over a period of time. The other benefits of corporate identity include investor relations, public relations, corporate communication persons, human resource professionals can bank upon a robust identity to relate to their distinct target audience. I'm sure most of us have some wish list in our life that where would you like to work? Not only companies, even about universities. So those universities who are considered top ranking universities have really worked hard to create that kind of a robust corporate identity, which does not come with a good building or a beautiful campus or flowers around, or you know, uh, the kind of people uh, you know, it attracts. Yes, that's also important. But what is important is the kind of curriculum, the kind of faculty, the kind of courses, and the kind of students is able to churn out year after year, who go to the industry, and get into leadership positions and that is what gets you know rubbed on the corporate identity and image of a university so when uh, people are uh, you know applying for uh, you know admissions so they have a, li a wish list of the great universities similarly when youngsters are applying for jobs they too have a wish list so where has this wish list come from they may not even have an experience about that company before they've joined. But then there's a whole media stimuli, the environment, the ecosystem, which tells them about the kind of company uh, it, these are and the kind of jobs, uh, you know, they can, uh, job satisfaction they can have. I recall many years, uh, the info says, uh, you know, employment notifications used to be very interesting. It wasn't, uh, you know, a normal kind of employment notification. They would generally have a picture of someone who was working there at a certain position, and there'll be a whole strip of his, you know, profile pictures, and they would say, he's so-and-so working as project director, and he would talk about, in a few lines, what it is like working at Infosys. Now, the whole idea behind this was, number one, the ad was attractive with a picture, so it'll attract the people 
of that genre who would like to, uh, to join Infosys and by telling how happy he was doing what he was doing, he was giving a little peep into uh, the working of Infosys so that people similar to that gentleman would love to work there. And they don't come by accident. These are all very thought about uh, decisions taken by corporate communication people in conjunction with HR people, similar in marketing, with, in conjunction with marketing people, how to position a product in the minds of the people through third party endorsement. All this put together, uh, you know, makes for a, a very robust corporate identity. Then there's a value of symbols. Interestingly, we know that even all religions have symbols. How would you otherwise differentiate one religion from another? Like, you know, Hinduism has swastika or Om, Christianity has a cross, Islam has crescent moon and stars, Buddhism has a palm. So all these are very important, you know, uh, indication of which religion we are talking about. And besides the uh, symbols, there are some personalities who are known by certain symbolism. We think of Buddha when we think of palm of the hand. We think of Nehru and we think of jacket and the rosebud. We think of Mahatma Gandhi and we think of specks, stick and dhoti. We think of Mother Teresa and we think of white sari with a blue border. If an artist just paints a white sari, uh, you know, just a face, without a face, just a black, uh, a blue border, and we know that he is painting uh, uh, Mother Teresa in a very impressionistic style, he doesn't have to give a face even. Now, what are the values of symbols? Symbols not only have manifest, but also emotional values as well. Symbolism, however, has traversed a long journey from the real to surreal and impressionistic. As I said, in the past, nature was depicted as a real scene. Now, just a splash of green would denote nature. In the past, faces were close to real. Now, the proportion may not be the criteria. But when you're creating symbols, it's very important that simplicity should be the deciding factor. Now, communication is a very important part of building corporate identity. And the aim of a robust corporate identity is to provoke, reinforce, remind, build a bond, and act on the part of your stakeholders. I hope you recall Onida's devil. There was a time when people go and say, Tuta TV DJ. Now, nobody wants to have a, a broken TV. But Onida's devil was so loving that he was able to build a bond between the people, the customer, the potential customer, and the TV. The lovely, utterly, butterly Amul girl, who you see almost every day, you know, peeping from big billboards or from, uh, you know, newspapers, as because every day you have a, you know, a comment about the utterly, butterly girl on a social, political, economic issue. Air India's Maharaja, it has been almost more than 70 years in regaling people uh, with his, uh, you know, antics and with his uh, style and the hospitality which he promises to give uh, as good as to be given to a Maharaja. The Gattu of Asian Paints, the Sayani Rani of Jago, Grahak Jago, the thumbs up. I recall in the 70s when uh, Coca-Cola went from the country lock, stock and barrel only to come back uh, in the early 80s. So thumbs up as a edited drink came on the scene. I think it was from Parley's. And when this uh, you know, name and the symbol came, I personally wondered that what a name for a thumbs up, uh, for, for an edited drink. But soon it was realized that thumbs up became a kind of a symbol for the youngsters to ask for the drink. And it became very popular. And they, they tried to, uh, you know, have the entire publicity around that taste the thunder, which continues even till today, making it a very different kind of a drink than the international uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And it has a very, very loyal brand of people who would like to have thumbs up nothing else. Then we also recall the, re the red triangle of family planning. Now, this was uh, very abstract. But then, uh, you know, many empirical studies, studies suggest that this was the most remembered, but at the same time dreaded, you know, uh, symbol for uh, uh, reminding people of the family planning. 
Now, while companies, uh, many companies stick to the same original uh, corporate identity, but some have changed also for various reasons. Coca-Cola and Bata have retained their original style for over a century. It's a signature style. Many companies who are not so old have changed it. Vodafone, Airtel, ONGC are some of the companies which have recently changed, uh, in the last few years have changed their style. I'll just show you uh, these symbols in a minute. Procter & Gamble has a very interesting study, uh, you know, case study, which I'd like to share with you. Uh, it changed it for a legal, ethical reason. Now, Procter & Gamble's, uh, you know, uh, corporate uh, symbol was, uh, you know, man with the moon and some stars. Somehow, for some reasons, it uh, earned a lot of uh, criticism from certain sections of society who aligned the company to the League of Saturn. So the company, uh, you know, moved the court, won the case, but it's still this kind of a grapevine will not change, will not go away. So in order not to get into the hassle of making people understand, it just changed its logo just to, to have peaceful existence and not to have any unwarranted criticism against it. I'm sure they'll show it to you, the Airtel's, uh, the previous, uh, uh, you know, logo and the new logo. Similarly, the previous logo and the new logo of Videocon. Now, look at, let us look at the rationale. Now, industry is generally said to be a rational block. They think rationally, they think with the mind. But brand is often seen as a human block, which is governed generally by emotion. The purpose of corporate identity is to bridge the gap between the rational block and the human block or the emotional block. Let's give an example. Is thinking brand and acting corporate? The good example is Sony, you dreamt it, we made it. Tata Safari is very interesting, uh, you know, campaign when they came with the safari, make your own road. And the whole of this was supported by advertising when a safari was going on zigzag road in the mountain and strange where there was no road, it was making its own road. Then uh, Volvo car for two decades advertised on the plank of safety. And now you find that because safety is a given in a car now. So now you find most of the cars, including Volvo, they talk about style, they talk, they talk about emotional connect with the people, with the family, with the wife, with, uh, with, with uh, the children. That is how uh, it supports the corporate identity. Some more examples include one of my very favorite case studies of Britannia. Eat healthy, think better, swast khao, tanman jagao. Until the late, I think, or the early or mid 80s, Britannia was like any bakery industry, baking bread and, uh, you know, and also buns uh, and maybe some small other products, some biscuits. All of a sudden you found there was a complete change in the style of Britannia's communication supported by a mission statement and corporate identity. Now, when they thought about uh, this mission statement or the, uh, of the company, eat healthy, think better. It comes from the age old Indian, you know, wisdom that you are what you eat. Jaisa an vaisa tan. Swast khao tan man jagao. If you eat uh, healthy, uh, you'll have a good body. So this, you know, completely changed the whole paradigm about the company per se. From a bakery industry, it became a lifestyle industry. And look at the range of biscuits and the breads it has. And it has been, uh, it has been whatever it has become is now part of the history. So this change of identity really did a lot of wonders for the company. Pepsi, Coke have been changing their, uh, you know, mission statements and their, I wouldn't say corporate identity per se, and uh, to do with the changing times because both, uh, you know, uh, target, the, the target, the target the youth, like Pepsi, ye dil mange more, to ye pyaas hai badi, to ha yes abhi. Now ha yes abhi defines a youngster 
who is low on patience, he wants everything now and now. Similarly, Coke from is the real thing to open happiness. So all these mission statements, which are part of a corporate identity, they change with the changing time, keeping the logo, etc., intact. Now let's look at the difference between a corporate identity and corporate image. Corporate identity, in effect, is how a company sees itself and corporate image is how a company is perceived by stakeholders. I hope you understand how you present yourself and how you are deconstructed is corporate identity and corporate image respectively. Now what does corporate image incorporate? The physical manifestation, the office, uniform, packaging, I mean, that's how it gets uh, you know, uh, deconstructed the products, your delivery mechanism, service, after sales service, product reliability, advertising, research and development, uh, competitive edge. In fact, corporate identity will draw inspiration from the above and create necessary symbols, colorism, etc., etc. The basic considerations while working on a design are that the corporate identity must reflect its ethos in terms of design principles, choice of color scheme and lettering style, mnemonic, graphics, etc. For, for example, when the color red is used, the color of life, youthfulness. When the color blue is used, generally to do with cleanliness, male. When the color pink is used, to do with, and pastel shades, to do with products which are do with children or women when, the, when you're using pastel colors. From technical perspective, however, it's very important to keep in mind that corporate identity symbol will be published, printed, painted on various formats and sizes from large billboards to letterheads to visiting cards to product packaging. So it has to be such that the design is simple, color scheme as far as possible, keep it primary colors, and the lettering style will have to be kept in view. Don't use half tones, quarter tones, because you cannot really, uh, you know, uh, reproduce them on various surfaces. Surface can be uh, a plastic, it can be uh, an iron, it can be steel, it can be billboard, it can be vinyl, it can be a paper. So all these things are very important. I've seen good companies have a design book, because a company may have you know, hundreds or dozens of uh, uh, projects where these are used on stationery and other things, on their vehicles, etc., on the on their signage. So a design uh, book uh, is uh, shared with uh, the company's various projects, various locations, so that they follow it strictly, and it is done in a very technical and mechanical style. I recall uh, Air India and Indian Airlines, as we know, they used to be two different uh, organizations under the same ministry. And then the decision was taken to merge them. Now we have only Air India, both for domestic as well as uh, uh, you know uh, overseas uh, uh, flights. But then imagine the kind of work they had to do to change the complete uh, you know uh, brand identity and brand uh, corporate identity. Thousands of vehicles had to be changed. Hundreds of uh, you know those aircrafts, the symbols had to be changed. The design on the you know uh, the signage everywhere, the thousands of the hundreds of you know airports you have, it was Herculean task, and it took them quite a long time. Despite they merged, you still continued seeing Indian Airlines Air and Air India different symbols for a long time. So it has to be a very very concerted and very uh, you know thought about decision when you're thinking about changing your corporate identity. I recall in the 80s, I think, early 80s, when the government of India decided that Hindi would be the official language, uh, uh, you know, in the country. So, uh, uh, you know, we received a letter from the government saying that henceforth, all the public sector undertakings logo will be in bi-language, so which means that uh, the, the logo will have both Hindi and English. Now, a logo can be just a symbol, an abstract, or it can be uh, you know, uh, with words. 
it was a herculean task for uh, so many you know hundreds of public undertakings to uh, to change their logo to you know subscribe to what the government wanted uh, the public sector to do now corporate identity could perfectly match or can be a mismatch with the corporate image therefore it's very important to align it you cannot be say, uh, you know uh, you cannot be devising something and being deconstructed differently so uh, it's very important on the part of the people in charge both internal groups within the corporates and all, as well as the expert committees which you set from outside to align corporate identity with the corporate image so let's see how do we do it matching corporate image with the corporate identity scenario 1 the image and reality are accurately aligned what it means it means the company has been able to communicate its position to all key stakeholders in a positive way the corporate image thus would support the corporate image the identity and image would be perfectly aligned scenario 2 the image is significantly better than reality this means that the company has been effective at communicating the desired image but it has not been able to sustain that position operationally this is because the company has not understood its identity or that it has been suffering from some complex sometimes a bad product some sabotage some issue inside the company and you find that you know because it has a long experience or long you know history so uh, the people also get aligned to the kind of identity uh, they have with the company but they don't they realize that the identity is not matching with the product you would have seen sometimes that when there's a product recall it becomes a huge image issue for the companies and they would do anything to you know appease the customers say that to make them believe there's an aberration and it's not a general rule so uh, they would immediately take uh, corrective actions so it's very important that they take corrective action in scenario 2 scenario 3 is the reality is better than or at least different from the image this indicates that the company is failing to communicate effectively you have a good product you have a good service but still you find that you're losing your base or uh, the people are changing uh, you know the product or they're changing the service which means that you are doing good but you're not communicating so what are we supposed to do in case we have these three scenarios what should be done when one is faced as i said with any of the three situations in case of one there's no need to alter communication this perfectly aligned in case of two operational problems need to be resolved so that you match your identity with your image in case of three the communication process needs to be effective you're doing good your product is good but you're not communicating you're not uh, spending enough time effort and money in communicating so align that it is very important as faculty for who are teaching corporate communication to engage the students to do a hands on uh, you know work hands on to give them hands on skills uh, at the indian institute of mass communication when the uh, institute turned 50 years Uh, in uh, 2015-16, so we give this exercise to a batch of 75 students to create a, a logo, a special logo, uh, commemorating 50 years of the institute. And out of those 75, uh, you know, presentations which we got, we shortlisted uh, one. Uh, I remember the name of the student, Durgesh, who had a graphics background, and he came out with a beautiful logo commemorating the institute's 50th year, and which was adopted. uh you know uh, for the uh, for celebrating the 50th year and continues till even today so my suggestion to you would be to ask the students to create a house style either for an existing brand or a hypothetical brand at the end of the presentation i'm going to share with you a uh, to 10 minutes film which gives the complete you know uh, process of creating a corporate identity a logo which you can share with your students to complete the exercise thank you so much this is a branding case study for a company named fincense fincense are a financial uh, planning company this is their existing logo and taglines this also shows their existing uh, logo applied to 
uh, letter head and pull up banner. For them, we uh, needed to look at updating their um, brand identity and started at their logo. So we showed or we looked at ways of updating uh, the scales, make them a bit more modern, uh, looking at ways of um, looking at improving the traditional style as well as uh, making a bit more of a contemporary version of the scales and here we see uh, concepts uh, just written down on paper and then done on computer and the first round of concepts uh, supplied to the client we looked at color and font variations the colors we looked at were corporate as well as friendly and warm so it wasn't uh, too clinical. The font variations at the bottom uh, we looked at varying types of font that would be suitable and different color combinations of those fonts. We also looked at upper and lowercase versions of, of the name or logo type. And we also looked at improving the tagline. Uh, so we looked at different types of uh, versions based on uh, promoting different things in their business. We then went ahead and uh, looked at logo versions. These ones are a bit more traditional, uh, not going too far away from their existing logo. But breaking the two words up uh, fin and sense, so really um, reinforce the financial and sense element to their name. <clears throat> we also looked at uh, creating the scales out of the F of fin sense, so it reinforced the name. We looked at ways of simplifying the scales and further simplifying the scales to a, to a graphic uh, brand mark. And we looked at something uh, a little bit different, so it was uh, pushing uh, the logo a little bit further. In this case, uh, the triangle represents um, like a graph um, finances increasing. We then, uh, after talking to the client about these ideas, got feedback and worked on round two ideas and applied those ideas to stationery, in this case business cards. And letterhead. And then we finalized a logo. This logo was the final one chosen uh, and incorporated the colors that worked well and the tagline that worked well. So it's quite a strong uh, end result. And you can see the original logo on the left and the logo after on the right. So it's a lot uh, stronger, more modern, um, and it gets right to the point. We then applied this logo to stationery. And produced a style guide. The style guide goes through our correct colors to use in different formats and correct logos to use in different colors, as well as our fonts. We then applied the logo to a pull-up banner. This one's uh, a lot more simpler than the original. 